Gender equality is more than a goal in itself. It is a precondition for meeting the challenge of reducing poverty, promoting sustainable development and building good governance. Well, yesterday, May 5th, Sierra Leone joined the rest of the world to commemorate International Day of the Midwife. While you think it was incredibly long marked awareness day, it wasn't made official until 1992 when it was launched formally by the International Confederation of Midwives. Well, the idea of having a day to um, recognize and honor midwives uh, came out of the 1987 International Confederation of Midwives Conference in the Netherlands. Midwifery is a health um, care profession in which providers offer care to childbearing women during pregnancy, labor, and birth, during the postpartum um, period and uh, between pregnancies. Well, in the 2019 theme this year, of course, it is Midwives, Defenders of Women's Rights. So to talk us through on this, we have with us Safia Tu um, Fode, who is the president of Sierra Leone Midwives Association, and Francis Fona, Sierra Leone Midwives Association District Chair, Bombali. All right, good morning. I'm going to start off with you, Francis. It's great to have both of you anyway. But I'll start off with you, Francis. Um, mid midwifery, uh, or midwifery, which is it? <laughs> what, what's the correct pronunciation? Midwifery. Midwifery, perfect. Oh, so okay. midwife. So um, take us through briefly on this profession. Thank you very much. Good morning, viewers. Um, uh, first of all, I would like our viewers to know when we say midwife, who is a midwife? Um, according to the International Confederation of Midwives, who actually oversees all midwifery activities, and that includes regulation, education, and association in the whole world, a midwife is a person who has successfully completed a midwifery educational program in the country where it is located and has actually acquired the requisite um, qualification to be registered or practice uh, as midwife. And that person has to be licensed by the nurses and midwives board. So that is why we are saying that before a midwife graduates, you should have gone uh, undergone through a midwife educational program, registered with the board and licensed to practice as a midwife. If any midwife practices without a license, then that midwife's profession is questionable. Mm, but we do have, um, especially in the interiors yeah. um, of country, where we have a lot of unprofessional midwives, um, you know, helping pregnant women go through the childbirth process. Well, they may be assisting, like we have um, the maternal and child health assistants, who also supports midwives in their roles. But a midwife is actually the lead professional in the care of women and their newborns. Mm -hmm. So whosoever may be practicing may be supporting midwives. But you know, what, what's the difference with traditional birth attendants who perform similar roles, like um, Stella was saying, especially mm -hmm. in rural communities? Okay, let me hasten <clears throat> to say that the role of the traditional birth attendants have been reviewed and changed because according to health development partners, the role of um, the traditional birth attendant, you know, cannot by any means, you know, support um, pregnancy, labor, and childbirth effectively. And so, therefore, the roles have been reviewed, and now it has been changed to community mobilizers, supporting women in the community on activities like um, breastfeeding, supporting them in health education, and then also counseling them to take their newborns to the facility to deliver. They don't deliver at all? Now, ideally now, they are not supposed to conduct deliveries. Now, what basically we are doing is to encourage them to come to the facility so that we can work together. We don't want them to actually, we don't want to isolate them anymore. We want to work with them together so that we are sure that whenever we conduct deliveries, our women are safe and their newborns are also safe. Mm. Well, 
as 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 much as you've explained, we still have a lot of problem, especially um, our country, where we still have women who are unlicensed, um, who are not professionals in the field, still assisting women to give birth, because we have communities where they do not have healthcare centers mm. or hos access um, access to hospitals. Yes, I absolutely agree with you. Um, that is the reason why we have or the government of Sierra Leone and other health development partners have actually um, tried to also um, establish midwifery institutions. Of course, in 2010, the midwifery institution was established in Makeni for the northern region. And then in 2000, quite recently in 2017, another midwifery institution has been established in, in Bo. So the more we establish midwifery institution, we more we, the more we train midwives, adding to the number of midwives. You will agree with me that there is a gross shortage of midwives in the whole country. And that could be one of the reasons why we have other people who are on licensing actually taking deliveries in other areas of the community. Okay, all right. Well, so as, as, we, as we look at the whole situation now where still midwifery is still a profession that, um, you know, first of all, people don't feel very comfortable going into in Sierra Leone. And then not to talk about the fact that we have um, there's a shortage mm. in that area. How do we overcome this? Well, the first um, thing is that we now have a vibrant association, which we call the Sierra Leone Midwives Association. And the Sierra Leone Midwives Association speaks on behalf of the midwives in the whole country. And this association is also responsible to ensure that midwives are well taken care of. So if we have a very good profile and image of the association, then we'll, have, we'll be able to attract many people to come into the profession. Okay. But apart from that, the government of Sierra Leone and other health partners are also providing support. You know, are also investing on midwives and they are also investing in midwifery as a profession. As I speak to you, we have many partners but key to the support of midwives is UNFP. Okay. And that is why this week we have celebrated, the whole of last week, we have been celebrating our 50th anniversary alongside with UNFPA's 50th anniversary. Just to encourage midwives, you know, in this profession. Last week we, we awarded, or midwife, uh, UNFPA awarded um, 50 midwives for their good work they have done in various areas and that includes service delivery mm -hmm. education regulation okay. Okay. let's move to the other guests quickly and um the the issue of having um midwives supporting pregnant women um before now in some communities you'll have people who are known in communities who attend to these midwives before um, you know, they, are set, they, they start to go to clinics or um, the hospital. Is that something that is still happening or is that something that you approve of giving that care at home before they go to the clinic? Um, viewers all over the world, good morning. Um, your, straight to your question. Actually, midwifery care is a care given by midwives. And my colleague has defined what a midwife is. So whoever does not fall within that category, mm -hmm. it means it's not a midwife. We are talking about people doing something that are not licensed to do. So these are respectable people in their community. They are people, people confiding, and so they conduct deliveries. Delivery by nature. Over 80% of deliveries can be normal. Mm -hmm. Now, the point here we are stressing about midwives and the professionals is that what they can do when complications arise. Mm -hmm. And this is where the death is happening. Mm -hmm. This is where we have the poor maternal indices, complications when they arise, and who actually uh, does the work to be able mm -hmm. to save a woman's life. And this woman in the village, this mother in our village, our grandmas, our aunties, they don't know them. They don't have the know-how. 
Okay. So I am saying again, the midwifery care is a care that a midwife can provide. Maternal services, other people can provide it. But when we talk about midwives, this is an autonomous body that so, has... So normally, do they get the complications before going to the clinics? Either because they are not attended to by midwives, or do they get the complications when they actually go to the clinic? Well, complications arise any time. Mm. It can arise during pregnancy, during labor, and after labor. So during pregnancy, when it occurs and you come for ANCs, they are easily detected and they are taken care of. But when it happens interpartum, during labor, where you need to do an other extra work, which you cannot do, that is where the problem is. When it happens after labor and you cannot do beyond your own skills, this is where the problem is. And so we are saying, yes, you are part of the team. But just bring them to institutions where we have the trained personnel mm -hmm. that can act and that can take action wherever these things occur. Where, where does the work of a midwife start and end? It's, it's, it's a cycle. I will tell you, in summary, the work of a midwife is a cycle. They take birth, they take care pre-pregnancy until death throughout the reproductive age of both men and women, interestingly. But the work of midwives, when you are pre-pregnancy, you want to be pregnant, you are pregnant during the labor, the labor after labor. You know, yeah. the, why I ask this is because we have very high mortality rates, mm. um, you know, birth mortality rates um, in Sierra Leone. Uh, where, where, is, where is the problem coming from? The, the problems are coming from different parts. I am saying... Maternal mortality and infant mortality points at poor quality of work. And this encompasses a lot of factors. I am saying you can train a midwife and place that midwife in a, in a very uh, good hospital, but if <clears> the person <throat> does not have the enabling environment to function, then there is a fault. We are talking about the trained personnel who has the right competency, the right skills and the right attitude. We are talking about the enabling environment, what to work with. We are talking about the team, who to work with. You understand this? So the whole midwifery care. We as professionals, as the midwives, we lead the work. Mm -hmm. But we need support team. Like, for example, a bleeding woman, a woman who has bled and needs blood. If there is no blood in the blood bank, there is no way a midwife can. We can do a lot of care, nursing care, midwifery care, to be able to sustain that particular dying woman for some time. But if that woman needs blood, and blood now, and there is no blood, there is no way. If that woman, a fitting woman, the woman that is suffering from hypertension, that has, got, that has gone into convulsion, that needs magnesium sulfate, for example, and this drug is not, is not available, the midwife does not have uh, mm. the magic. So we are saying we need the enabling environment to function, but the consumables and supplies. One would say the government has um, placed some sort of priority or premium on the health sector where we see an increase in funding for um, you know, health, especially Free, um, um, uh, free health care yeah. for healthcare pregnant, program. lactating, and, um, and for children under five, five yeah. uh, children. We appreciate what government is doing and what government has done, but we are saying there is still a gap. Mm. Yeah, there is still a gap. And the gap is, number one, the, the, in terms of quantification and procurement, we don't get enough data to be able to quantify what the, our people need. And when these drugs come finally into the country, to be able to distribute it to the last mile. We are talking about the facility where this woman needs this thing. We cannot have medication seated at Central Medical Store. And somebody dying at Kobula, you think there's drug in this, in this country. So, so, so but when I say, let, let, let me finish. Mm -hmm. A lot of work, energy has been put into that. Government and its partners <clears throat> have actually tried to push that one that I'm saying, to actually remove these challenges, but they are still challenges. So, so um, you're saying generally it, it doesn't have to do with the service, a quality of midwives, the service you provide that leads to these complications or um, the high rate of maternal and mortality we're talking about. It's based on, um, you know, the services that are not available, say medical, the, the, the conducive environment of doing your work. Yes, it doesn't necessarily mean that this midwife doesn't know what to do. The competency that the, gov the, the, the midwife has, the skills that she has or he has to be able to, to provide the services, we are saying it encompasses. There are a lot of things surrounding that. Even the woman, the pregnant woman, they take time to come to the hospital. Mm. They want to wait for their husbands. They don't have money. Even when the government is saying there is free service delivery, even when we say to them, 
come, we can work with you. Come and have your delivery in the hospital. They are still lagging behind. They are, again, sometimes they wait until labor is very, very close. Mm. And because distances are far, these roads are not good. Connecting roads to this hospital, there's a lot of delay in all of these things. And when this happens, the woman is caught up. The unfortunate woman is caught up in this situation. So how, you know, it's, it's, is there some sort of assessment um, you know, and review process for midwives to ensure that they are, first of all, trained? So you, is there any sort of certification or review of certification of those who say they are trained midwives? And also, are there refresher courses that midwives mm. are required to embark on every given period of time? Well, what, what, what I want to clarify here, for every licensed midwife in this country, they are trained to a level of, of education that is internationally acceptable. That one I will show you. But what I'm trying to say here is that the number to be able to provide the services is low. But government has tried with other partners. Now we have three midwifery schools. We have one in Freetown, we have one in McKinney, and quite recently we have one in Bow. And one is on its way again. So we are saying they are trying to increase the number of professionals that can provide the services women need in this country. That is number one. Number two, government again is working with partners, especially UNFP. I would say to UNFPA um, has um, supported government to rehabilitate and to come up with 100 beds hospital. For example, Rokupa is one example. A 100 bed hospital that have a whole maternity complex. Let me don't go to the, to the provinces, but let me deal with Freetown here. So I am saying they are again providing the space mm. to be able to accommodate these pregnant women when they come to hospital. So much is being done. So we are, we are seeing green light at the end of the tunnel. But are there, but, are there reassessment of so, midwives? Are so let there me refresher courses am, that they are required to embark on? Yes, of course. So I am just, I am just uh, explaining. So apart from this, when you go through the course, refresher courses are being done for midwives when new skills okay. come. And again, to be able to rely in. Yo, to, to be able to be to be to be able to be realizing in this country, there's what we call continu continuous professional development (CPD). Mm. You know, you need to to produce or to show that you have been doing this and you have done this to stay in practice. You are not coming with 1845 practice here. We are talking about current and standard practice as per ICM. Uh, 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 but, okay. uh, Let, let's come quickly to to Balam. The issue of um, conditions of service for these people we're talking about. You know, um, it's huge work taking care of pregnant women, supporting them to give birth without any complication. How much do you advocate or um, on their behalf for um, better conditions of service? We know a lot of people in the health sector have been complaining about conditions of service. Well, thank you very much. It's a very very important question. Um, we all know that midwives are actually working. Majority of them who are working up country are working in conditions that are very, very challenging. So for the mere fact that they are working in those remote areas, I think they need to be actually looked into their conditions of service. And that includes also their salaries. Quite recently, we have had a top up, uh, you know, on their salaries from the government. But that is not enough. As an advocate, they need also to work in an enabling environment. But the presidents have already thrown light on that. That indeed, when we talk about enabling environments, we are talking about even what they use to work, equipment and supplies. If they have those things to work with, I'm sure they will be motivated to work. Mm. But sometimes... They find themselves working in areas we are in to even have an equipment to conduct their procedure. It's challenging. It's difficult. And so advocating on behalf of the profession and on behalf of midwives is to talk to all health development partners, including the government of Sierra Leone, to be able to, to ensure that midwives have the right equipment to work with. Mm. But apart from that, if you go to this remote area, you realize that accommodation is also a challenge. Before now, there had been no midwives in the in remote areas until 2012, when we started graduating um, midwives to work in rural areas. And now, governments have deployed lots of midwives 
in rural areas. And that is kudos to the government of Sierra Leone, especially the Ministry of Health and Sanitation. But what is, what is yet to be done is to ensure that midwives have access to a very good accommodation. Mm. In a facility, for example, in a community health center, you have one quarter, our staff quarter, that houses the CHO community health officer and that houses the maternal and child health assistant. That same structure houses the midwife and other, you know, uh, health workers. So you find out that they, will, they are just having one room each. Oh, we have had instances wherein we have posted, the government have posted um, um, midwives in those areas. You realize that some of them stayed in the, hus the, the hospital itself, the facility, for a period of time before they have actually been able to access accommodation. So these are the challenges. And that is why the association is here to speak on behalf of these midwives so that their conditions of service will be looked into and will be actually made better. Okay. Uh, these midwives work in those areas. They don't even have communication, ne mobile network connectivity with their families who are here. So can we link all of this to the issue Stella was talking about, the maternal, the high rate of maternal mortality? I was reading um, a tweet from UNFP yesterday. Yeah. We were talking about the, the commemoration of the day. And it, it still highlights that, um, you know, we, we are far, far below with uh, maternal mortality. So these are all the problems that, that are causing that. Absolutely. The issue with the high maternal and infant mortality in this country is multifactorial, I must say. There, you cannot single out one factor to say this is the reason. So we have also on the part of the women who are even accessing the service. My colleague um, Ali Aon said, for them to make the decision, we're talking about the three delays, for them to make the decision to even come to the facility when they are pregnant, it's one thing. When complication arises, at home, it's difficult for them because of tradition. You have the, the leader to make decision. If the husband is not around, that woman has to wait for the husband to come in order to make that decision. Women generally are not empowered to make decision. Thank God for many women's organizations who are actually promoting, you know, women's empowerment. Some women in the remote areas, and that is my focus. Mm. I focus on rural maternity care because that in those areas you have majority of, com of complications happening. And so for them to make that decision, it takes time. And for them even to access the facilities, the road network, it's one thing economic. But now we are going, we are actually, um, you know, forgetting about the economic aspect because it is free health care. Which is why they stick most times to the traditional birth attendant. The, these traditional women who are in their communities who provide care for them because they can't travel long, they can't access clinics or the um, health centers. So how do you work with these local people, you know, getting them along so that they can prevent, you know, um, unnecessary deaths or complications? Absolutely. Um, we, as I said before now, we are working with them closely. And the government, especially the, the district health management teams, have actually integrated them into the system. But apart from that, we have community health assistants also. In those communities, right from pregnancy, they continue to talk to them to access the facilities, and that the facilities are actually free. So when they access those facilities, you meet also the midwives who also talk with them, who educate them. We are doing lots of health education, you know, for pregnant women you know, labor and delivery and the other aspects. So when they come, we educate them and we give them the times that they should be coming to the facilities. So we work in partnership. And as much as midwives are lead professionals in the care of women and their newborns, we don't work in isolation at all. Mm -hmm. We work in partnership with all the other health workers in the community and then in the health facility. That is when you talk about district level. And then in the tertiary hospital, we have what we call the referral system. So if the referral system is actually working well, then it is one thing that actually will contribute to the reduction of maternal and infant mortality. With all the um, sensitizations being done, especially in our country, to encourage 
um, more women to access um, healthcare centers, especially um, during the prenatal um, period. Yeah. Yet still, would you say it's sufficient given the number of women who still do not access these centers? I would say there is still a lot of work to be done. It is actually not sufficient. Now we are looking at a time that we will have midwives in various levels of healthcare delivery system. You know, the healthcare delivery system is being delivered through various levels. You have the peripheral health units. And within the peripheral health units, you have the maternal and child health posts, you have the community health posts, and you have the community health center. And it is in the community health centers that midwives are being deployed. You understand that? Of course, we have also the tertiary level. But coming back to the peripheral health units, we, had, we are training midwives to be able to work in various levels. Mm -hmm. For now, we are stocking all the community health centers with midwives. So we are looking forward to government, especially the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, to deploy midwives in those levels so that they will take lead in the care of um, um, women. But apart from that, midwives are also embarking on outreach services. So we don't always sit in community health centers. We don't always sit in hospitals. The DHMT is there to organize such outreach so that we meet women even in their homes. When we have defaulters, when we tell women, come at this period for your care, and you don't come, there is a whole lot of, you know, there is a ledger that looks at those defaulters. And then, then you go meet them. And then, yes. So you trace defaulters to know why what, what, you have not come. What a situation where the husband is reluctant to get the wife to actually access um, the centers? I know that there are those in, um, in, instances. What then happens in that situation? Um, it's, it's a difficult situation, but I want to say that it does happen. In various instances, we've had husbands telling their wives not to go. Mm -hmm. So, but when it comes to us, we are able to talk to them. I think it's counsel. Midwives are also trained as counselors, as advocates. I've been telling people that the role of midwives have gone beyond just taking deliveries. Mm. We are advocates, and that is why this, this year, the theme says, midwives defenders of women's rights. And we train them to do that. We need more training. In fact, I want to say that we are welcoming all partners on board to support us. We want to actually go to all areas where our midwives are working. We are even nurses are working to actually acquaint them with the rights of women so that they start to implement that. We have also had instances we are in midwives or women who have access, you know, care from midwives have said that their privacy is uh, abused, confidentiality and the rest of it. So we want to flag those ones. Not, mm. It will not be in this country, but if you look at some research work, some surveys that have been done, we have had such case studies. And that is why the association in this country want to embark, we want to work with the theme to say that indeed, women's rights must be protected. So coming from Bombali, of course you're the district chair, what's um, the situation like there? Well, in Bombali district, we are still having a gross shortage of midwives, just like in other districts. And well, so, you have a school there, right? Yes, there is a school there, and I head mm. the school of midwifery in Makin. Mm. But we train, it's a two years program. And after two years, we hand over those um, midwives to the Ministry of Health and Sanitation to deploy them in various um, centers, even in hospitals. So basically, we are doing the training, conducting trainings, but the Ministry of Health, let me hasten to say that the School of Midwifery in McKinney is established by the Ministry of Health and Sanitation. Mm -hmm. And that is the, uh, the Ministry of Health institution. So basically, whatever we do is in consultation with the Ministry of Health and Sanitation. Are there, so, are there, is, there, is there a high interest in uh, the midwifery um, profession? I want to say yes. It's a yes to that. There is a high interest. And... We are looking forward to some of those interests to be operationalized. But the government is saying that there is need to invest in midwifery and, and midwives. Other UN partners are saying that. 
we have other partners who have come on board. So we need to operationalize such interests. Okay, let me now ask you, Safia, you are the president of the Sierra Leone Midwives Association. Is there any plan to sort of train and somehow certify those um, uh, traditional birth um, uh, at attendants? attendants. In, 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 in. I, I am going to deliberately refuse to answer your question, but to bring my interest. Mm. I will answer it later. You know, celebrating International Midwives Day is celebrating midwives. And as we celebrate ourselves, the world also celebrates us. As the mm. saying going, mm. it's nice to be celebrated. It's, it's nice to celebrate, but it's better to be celebrated. Mm. And so this one week, the past one week, we've used the past one week to celebrate and highlight our work. Um, this celebration was some, uh, supported by UNFPA and WHO. So since last week, we were together in a meeting. We actually assessed the strength of the association, who is the advocate, the mouthpiece of the profession. And on Thursday, we had the official day, that's the second, knowing very well yesterday, the fifth, which is the actual day, uh, was on Sunday. And so we had this celebration where 50 midwives were recognized, like my colleague has said, for their various roles, association, education, uh, regulation, as well as the service delivery itself. Then on, on Sunday yesterday, we had a match pass. And all of these, we were able to highlight, to bring ourselves out, to tell people what we can do, to be visible, that we are here and we're here to help mothers and, 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 and the newborn. And we are very conscious as midwives that when we, when we save a mother, we have saved the family. Mm. So we are saying families, we are coming closer to you. Come close to us. We are in partnership. We want to work with the families and, and mothers to take this partnership to a political level. Because when the political people get interested in what we do and what we are saying, then there's a complete change of the picture. What we are saying now, we are doing it little by little. And uh, UNFPA and WHO have been behind this. But UNFPA actually supports all the three midwifery schools in education, supporting all the, the students in the school, as well as giving them top-up as allowances. And so we are saying we are grateful to them. And um, WHO also supported this celebration that we are talking about today. So coming to, back to your question, in terms of certification of, there's no way, my dear sister, I am, I am a nurse midwife by background. My first work was in operating theater, and I helped and I supported work of uh, doctors and surgeons who did a lot of surgery across the 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 uh, um, uh, um, the issues around surgery. And that doesn't make me a surgeon. That doesn't make me a doctor because I know how to hold all the instruments together or to bring the skill together and stitch them and suture them. That doesn't make me a doctor. You must attain. A particular require you have a particular requirement and attain a particular standard to be able to be, to be titled a midwife. So when we're talking about midwifery, if you talk about TBAs, we're well, a little bit offended because you are bringing us too low. But again, we recognize their roles. Mm -hmm. We recognize their importance because these women meet them face to face. These women meet them, they talk with them. Most of them are their grandmas, our grandmas, their chief wives. They are respectable people. Mm -hmm. So we are saying to them through government and partners that come to us and let's work hand in hand. Be able to say, okay, this woman is pregnant, is four months pregnant, five months pregnant, go to ANC. Yeah, let the professional see you. So they make sure this um, um, defaulters that my colleague was just talking about is that we, did, we check them through the CHW and most of them as uh, TBAs. So they bring them to us and say, ah, Metro, sister, this man has not been to clinic for all these years, or all these months, or all these weeks. And their cl cl clinic date is past, is past, is way past. And so they are not here. So that's why I brought that person. So they are doing their own bits. They go to bring defaulters. They go to bring women for us. And in some instances where the roads are feasibly bad, they are bringing them to hospitals before time, maybe one week before delivery. If your EDD is about, uh, let's say, in the next two weeks you are due, they prepare their minds and they are brought to the facility a few days before time. They mm -hmm. are helping us with that. But when it comes to the professional care, please, I appeal to the public, let me use this podium to say midwives are professionals that are trained by international standards. When you talk about TBAs and you bring midwives here, then you are bringing us to a level that we cannot accept. But, 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 yeah, but the reality on the ground mm -hmm. is a lot of deliveries mm -hmm. up country actually done mm -hmm. by yeah. the TBAs. That is, that is Accessibility what you are is still a challenge. Yes, that is what I am not challenging that one. I am saying 
maternal services people can be in all facets of maternal services you provide but that doesn't that doesn't make you a midwife we are saying even as a woman a pregnant woman can lock up herself in a room and push her baby mm. yeah they do that in several we have had several cases like they push their baby and when they push this baby they will now ask for placenta separation there are times they push the baby and they wait the placenta comes out and they come for for they now ask can you bring me they do it themselves we've had all those cases but we are saying in case complications occur that is where our maternal mortality is 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 is, is mm. actually a challenge we are not able to save it because we are still recognizing these women are doing good job great job yes for those who are pushing this baby normally and you help them but how about those who are dying so what we need to say bring mm -hmm. these people to the hospitals what we what what uh, bring them to, for delivery as well as bring them for ANC. and in terms of uh, healthcare she mentioned it there's a challenge the human investment in this country is a challenge but i want to again use this podium to say and i'm sure they are aware that midwives are center in the achievement of sg of the sdg three and five if we forget that then it means we will not achieve again we will not be one of the countries that will be counted at the end of the sdgs so that's why the government has taken it seriously they are going to invest in midwifery or in midwives in education of midwives so that we give the women we will give the women the quality of of care they deserve we are saying they are not coming to hospital what are we doing differently that um, that is making them not to call mm. what can we do differently that we attract them mm. so we are saying let's give them the best people we cannot give tbas to uh, to to uh, uh, to the to uh, um, all the women in this country some people who are affluent or have money they take their wives abroad for delivery but how about the, the person who cannot afford even a price to ferry across maybe the distances between uh Bonf island and the main uh Bont mainland they cannot afford that cost so we are saying let's look into this and place people where give them the right people and encourage them to stay encouragement means give them the package mm -hmm. the right accommodation the right top-ups which they have tried to go around but we're asking for more Absolutely. we are saying midwives and nurses let me use the word nurses here today because all midwives in this country are also nurses but we are celebrating midwives midwives are nurses they made a choice of career but that doesn't mean they don't have the university requirement but this is a choice of career to actually serve humanity and so if we have chosen to serve the humanity let us let our conditions be looked there into. There was a time when there um, was um, sort of proliferation of, um, you know, training schools for midwives or nurses, um, <laughs> so to say. How, how much do you regulate, you know, as to who trains and who is qualified to serve as a midwife? Uh, as I sit here, I know there are 14 schools in this country. And out of those 14 schools, they have 11 schools of nurses. Nurses are nurses. And when you want to be midwives, you have to go to the three schools that mm -hmm. we just mentioned. Either in the National School of Midwifery in Freetown, yeah, which is uh, situated at uh, PCMH. They are housed in PCMH. You have the School of Midwifery in McKinney. They have their own whole complex. And they are in Mas Masuba community. And you have the Bo, uh, Sombo School of Midwifery Bo. And so if you do not attend these schools, it means you are not a midwife. Mm -hmm. So if you want to become a midwife, these are the three schools you attend. So they are being regulated and accredited by the regulatory body. Yeah. All right, well, continue to stay with us. We have with us Safiya Tufere, president of the Sierra Leone Midwives Association, and Frances Fona, Sierra Leone uh, Midwife Association. Well, she's the district chair from Bombay. We'll take a break and we'll be back. Unbeatable data bundle. Oh, now introducing Afrasil's unbeatable data bundles. To enjoy the unbeatable data bundles from the fastest and most reliable data network in Sierra Leone, Afrasil. Dial star one one three hash and get up to one hundred and fifty percent more data. Stay unbeatable. Stay with Afrasil. I'm unbeatable. Afrasil. Now we network. How to download GT Simpay in the Google Play Store. Step 1. Search for GT Simpay in the Google Play Store. 
Step 2. Click Install. Step 3. Go to the App section on your phone and open the downloaded app. Step 4. Select English. Step 5. Select Initialize. Step 6. Select Sierra Leone. Step 7. Enter your first name, last name, and account number. Step 8. You will get an SMS on your registered number with a default password. Enter it. Once you enter the default password, you can change your password and start making transactions. Thank you for downloading GT Simpay. GT Bank! Wouldn't you rather bank with us? Tea is an art only mastered by a few. And the master of them all, Meryl J. Fernando, invites you to tea. He selects the finest tea grown, processed, and packaged from Sri Lanka to bring you Dilma Pure Ceylon Tea. No compromise in freshness, flavor, taste, and satisfaction. That's why Dilma is for lovers of tea. Dilma Tea, for lovers of tea. Follow the action. The Afrocell Live Score Service bringing you all the latest sports update, goal replay and sports news of the Champions League, Premier League, Italian League, Spanish League, German League and French League matches to your fingertips. To receive match updates, sport news or goal replay about your team, match or league, just dial star 707 hash. For more info, call 111. Afrocell, now we network. Right, and welcome back. Of course, this is Wake Up Sierra Leone. Today is, um, um, of course, uh, well, we are talking about the midwives uh, celebration, and of course, um, we have with us in the studio Safia Tu Fode, who is the president of the Sierra Leone Midwives Association, and Frances Fona, who is um, from the um, well, she's the district chair from the Sierra Leone Association in Bombardy. So this year the theme is midwives, defenders of human, of women's rights. Okay, so I'm going to come back now to you, Safia, too. So um, we've spoken extensively about, you know, the profession and some of the challenges um, they're about. But um, given the fact that we have a situation where government is overburdened with so many other um, priority areas and so many other um, issues. What would be the work of um, midwives and, and, and the association to complement the work of government pending uh, all, all that has is, is been requested for is provided? What we are saying, um, if we are provided with what we want, even though we are short of staff, we'll do our best. Because as I always say, there is no midwife or no midwife will be happy seeing a woman for nine months and that same midwife sees this woman being wheeled out of a labor ward as a corpse so we are traumatized when this happens it destabilizes our emotions so that's how far we go and so we are saying if we have what we want to work with and would the government continue to invest in midwifery or midwives to be able to train more midwives I think we'll do our best. So pending the... that, because the, you know we all we all continue to hear um, where the government says that there is no money. Um, they are challenged with a lot of issues on the ground that they also have to pay attention to. So pending, um, you know, the provision of what is being requested, what would the association um, be doing to complement the work of government? Well, we are saying we'll continue to work, talk to our colleagues to provide their best out there. We'll continue to reach out to women to tell them the facility is there for them and they have the right people. And we continue to assure families within this year's theme specifically, saying uh, defenders of women's rights, you have the right to have the number of 
children you want to, to have and how far apart you want them. We also we want to say, as you said, looking at the difficulty the government is facing, but we'll still ring our bell in their ears mm -hmm. because this, is, this government has made it very clear in the speeches. We follow it. That maternal care is centered to this government. So we're saying within that particular facet of statement, we are saying if maternal care is centered, the investment is made with free, it's a priority. So we are not saying we cannot accept it, but we are saying we want to plead to them to make that statement uh, a reality so that uh, uh, the women are being taken care of. But at the moment, we we'll put up our best, we we'll work within what we have, and the partners are still supporting. And mm. these partners, I will not fail to mention them. We have UNFPA, we have WHO, we have GIZ, we have ICAP. These are the few I can remember now as I sit here. But partners are also supporting government to be able to ensure that women's and families' lives are seen. So as a professional here, on behalf of the midwives, we're saying we'll continue to do what we are supposed to do in terms of the real practice to be able to save a dying woman. Okay. okay. Um, d d d well, you know, we'll before see. now, when you speak about midwives and people who are into it, you speak about older women, mm -hmm. people, you know, the aged and stuff. But do, do you attract more young ladies? And what will be your message to them? You know, especially when you speak about, you know, defending women's rights and helping to save life. Well, that, that question is very important to my heart because uh, the, the new drive here is uh, working with young midwives. And um, the midwifery profession, uh, before this time in this country, we don't have a straight midwifery. You have to go through nursing. It means as you go through nursing, you go, you work for a few years, you come for midwifery, you get older. But we are getting people who are 30 years, below 30 years in the schools, meaning they are coming right on time to get their, 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 their education. And again, we are, we are trying to discuss with government. Yeah? to see how they can we can have straight midwifery programs for people who are interested in midwifery so that they go into midwifery, then we'll have younger people. Mm -hmm. But we are saying for us to get there, uh, it needs a lot of talk. So is it mm -hmm. a, a profession that only women um, probably go into? No, I want to say no, but it's, it's a female bias profession, uh, either because of this part of the world where, where men are not coming. The men are not coming for the for the for the particular profession, but we have we are proud to say we have few mid, midwives. They are not husbands, mm -hmm. but they are also midwives. <laughs> maybe, by profession. Maybe, maybe the name itself creates <laughs> yeah. a bias. Yeah. I want to try. What yes. I am saying. Well, I think people are actually misunderstanding the term midwife. Well, I to Literally, this she has yeah. given me the floor. <laughs> okay, we we'll take the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you well, come I'm again. Just, it's You'll just come a again. comment, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know. The term midwife literally means being with the woman. Okay. So if you have a male midwife, it simply means being with the woman. Okay. So it's not like calling midwives middlesman, especially yeah. the males. Yeah. It's being with the woman. I think that is what we want to flag. So you're providing the support to the wife. Yes, like absolutely. You're the health care provider, providing yeah, the support. Providing, so the being wife. with yes. the woman, supporting the Yes, she wanted no, to. No, she said it. <laughs> okay. Because we're not talking about the gender here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? yeah? Or the sex here, male or female. Yeah. We're talking about being with the woman. Okay. Whether you are a man or a woman, mm. being with the woman. Mm. Like a gynecologist. You can be a man or a woman. Okay. So we are saying the, the term midwife is about the person being with the midwife. Okay. A, woman, a woman a okay. laboring woman or a and, pregnant woman and, and interestingly um we have male midwives that have graduated who are doing so well okay. in practice and we want to encourage more men to come because they will be like the agents who will encourage men to take care of their women yeah. You know, uh, to maybe, take care of maybe them. Maybe in the yeah. association, you need to have men at executive positions who will come and <laughs> yes, speak. We'll yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we'll sit Yes, we will encourage them. Yeah, yeah, let that. them come and speak yeah. about the issues and yeah, the work you guys absolutely. are doing. Yeah. And, um, I know with this call now, I, I, I would just imagine I'd see a lot of men coming. Yeah, yeah yes. I'd see a lot of men coming <clears> forward. Let them come. Let yeah. them come. Can we I need see? male involvement all through, I'm all still, across. I'd still like me a woman, yeah. though, to you know, go through with me for <laughs> That's okay, yeah. can, can I say something also? Yes. Yes. You know, when we talk about uh, midwifery or midwifery association in this country, 
we also would not want to forget about UNFP. I'm not flagging it because I work for UNFP. It's because UNFP invests a lot in midwifery programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this year, coincidentally, they also celebrated 50 years of existence. Mm -hmm. And with their vision, uh, every pregnancy is wanted, mm -hmm. must be wanted, every child but safe, and every young person potential fulfilled. So they work through the midwives to be able to achieve that one. And so we want to appreciate them. Even the 50 awards they gave is because they want to mark the 50 years. Mm -hmm. So they awarded 50 midwives. Okay. I want to say this year again, UNFP is celebrating their 50 years of existence and investment in the reproductive health as a whole. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So final words, um, Francis. Well, I think um, this is a great opportunity for us to come, you know, to talk to our people out there. I want to say to colleague midwives that continue to do your best. Let's ensure that mid uh, our women are respected during pregnancy, labor and childbirth. And indeed, when they are respected, uh, they will have more chances to come back to your facility. We have had instances where a woman will say, ah, I was not treated well. And we don't want to see that anymore. We don't want to, to hear that as an association. So please, colleague midwives, continue to work, continue to do your best. Women in this country, please access midwives. They are, they are giving the best and quality care. If you access them, I'm sure together we are sure of reducing the maternal and infant mortality in this country. So all health development partners, I want to say continue to invest in midwifery. Because when once you do that, you'll be complementing government's efforts to actually reduce maternal and infant mortality. But lastly and finally, this year's, year's theme says, midwives, defenders of women's rights. We want to make a call to all development partners to support us as we write our proposal, as we submit proposals to development partners. Support us to be able to educate and to advocate for women's rights through, um, you know, conducting workshops and meetings with the midwives themselves who are involved in the care. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Safia, two final words. Yes, on a similar note, we want to say, I want to say to the viewers, and the, the government of this country and partners, that the midwives of this country are willing to put up their best to provide the quality they, they are supposed to provide for the women and the families. So we are saying we need your support. As an advocate or the president of the association, we are saying support the midwifery programs in this country. Invest in midwifery, train midwives, and give, provide us the enabling environment to function in minds and in heart. To our partners, we're saying thank you. UNFPA, WHO, GIZ, ICAP, we encourage more partners to come on board because there is, there is, there is more to be done within our midwifery. And so we are saying come on board and support this profession. If you invest in the quality of a midwife that we are supposed to produce and they are well regulated, then the association will say kudos to all of its members because they will be providing the, the best they have to women and people of this country. If you invest in midwifery, you are saving a woman's life and a family's life. That's all I have to say to you. And midwifery care is provided by midwives. It's not provided by people in maternal health services, but midwives who are trained to provide so. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Mm. Well, I think this is where we end the conversation yeah. for mm. this segment. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Safia Tufode, president of the Sierra Leone uh, Midwives Association and Frances Fona, Sierra Leone Midwives Association, District Chair in Bombali. Thank you so much. We'll take a break, um, or rather from Bombali, which because I mm. see you. Perfect. Mm. Perfect. <laughs>